<laughs> Welcome to Dice Junkies, and we're live. We're here with Dragon Blossom Cosplay. I'm going to let the line introduce themselves, starting with our uh, good good co-host. This is Q. What's up, y'all? Right. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm Emily. And I'm Zach from Dragon Blossom Cosplay. All right, and I'm Xenodamus, so I uh, hope you enjoy. Let's uh, let's get this started. All right, so let's uh, let's start it out a little bit with uh, some news before we before we get into uh, into what you guys do. Um, so what what all we have coming up on the news? I think we saw a new uh, Fantastic Beast uh, two trailer that was uh, pretty cool looking. Oh yeah, yeah. They, they, y'all already missed the part where I was accusing it of having the Star Wars prequel condition. <laughs> you know where all the magic looks better. Yeah, the yeah. further back in the timeline you go. And it's like, oh, wow, the magic is so large-scale and amazing. And you're like, what the heck happened by the time Harry came around? Well, I mean, it, 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 which which we did our counter-arguments and all that stuff. But, I mean, the point, also the thing is you do have that with any prequel is we get better technology, better graphics, uh, and can get away with – you also get more money because your your previous franchise uh, right. blew yeah. up and made them a crap ton of money. So they, then it's like, they oh, let's plenty, though. throw money at you. Well, <laughs> I'll shoot this out to Screw Attack then. Yo, Screw Attack, next one I want to see, y'all going to have to do what? Grimwald versus Voldemort. That would be a good one. <laughs> All so right. See who did it better. See who's got the best skills. But, uh, all right. Uh, what what did you guys think? I mean, you you you're the ones that actually brought up the the trailer existed. So I I like it. Um, <laughs> uh, same with him. I'm kind of I'm kind of you know toward the side where I hated how they're throwing in more of these special effects and they're not throwing in those caps where words are needed or incantations to perform magic spells. It's just all hey flick of the wrist. But again, That's it, cool, though. it is kind of cool. It may have something to do I mean, with you're not policy. Wasting that your came time in. or wasting the script and saying something. Yeah. But it's implied in the books that that that's the skill of a master wizard. Mm-hmm. That's why, like, when Voldemort versus uh, Dumbledore was such a big deal. Because, like, oh, wow. Like, yeah, we've got two of these guys that can really easily do this. And it turns out, well, you know, I mean, they are also, like, some of them kind of in America and we're just mm-hmm. better. So maybe uh. we just learned how to do magic better. Oh. Uh, yeah. We're like, why do you keep saying stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Wizards of the industry. Yeah. All right, uh, let's see. What else do we have? Um, we saw that amazing new Doctor Who trailer, man. Oh, yeah. The, <laughs> I mean, it, it was, it it was like groundbreaking. It, it like was a pizza commercial. It was the epitome of a teaser. I mean, it did say teaser. It didn't say trailer. You didn't get you excited? Um, all the, all but the it was, hints and Easter eggs? It's one of the worst teasers I've seen. Well, here's the thing. It'd be funny if they threw in Easter eggs that we actually knew. Well, yeah. They were. yeah. You it, it's almost Bino? Like that you don't get the significance that that, that the article turned to be you know? Yeah, well, I mean, there's that, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm I'm gonna say I'm I'm horrible with names and stuff like that, so there may have been something thrown in there more, but um, I think it'd be not, cool if each one had been a former to... doctor dressed as a normal person, and that'd yeah. be cool. Just like like go back. Mm. Imagine if you didn't notice it first because of the back of heads, but as she walks through. It's just like here's Capaldi, and it just start lining up those oh, doctors. But they're sitting like they're just normally there, like at a coffee shop. Yeah, well, I mean, so much better at this than them. I, I'm Already. pretty sure some of the faces <laughs> I think nice. look familiar, but I can't remember if they look familiar from from Doctor Who or if they just look familiar from some other BBC mm-hmm. uh, broadcasting. You know, I mean, that's you probably got, what it was. But, you, but yeah. you got such a pivotal moment with the first female Doctor having her walk through all a uh, cafe filled with the former doctors, all being male. And it was just like that kind of nod mm-hmm. would have actually been an interesting, you know, pass the torch can be done with dignity and not like, you know, oddly or aggressively. You could actually do the, oh, cool. Look at that. Yeah. About time. You're reading yeah. a lot more into this teaser than I am. I was just like, eh, it's a teaser. That's the, that's it wasn't the, that great. That, that's the um, joke because there's nothing there. Yeah. I just saw pizza. Simply yeah. put, <laughs> it felt like one of those really old school Pizza Hut commercials. I, I did I did feel like I, I want pizza, pizza now. I'm, I'm going to yeah, see. Yeah, I got just admit, watching like, it. Was, like, they did more than one pizza, I think. Like, they went through, like, Pizza Pizza, Bino. And then, like the doctor, but. maybe maybe this doctor likes pizza. Maybe that's what this one's will stick. Uh, instead of instead of like fish and custard, uh, hers is gonna be pizza. Pizza. She's gonna be like cowabunga, you know. And... Oh, oh my god, <laughs> that was bad. 
You know, no, I would think it would have been awesome if they changed her outfit up for a Pizza Hut outfit. Now, that would be the coolest. <laughs> uh, doctor. Just like an actual Pizza Hut uniform. And just do the whole season. It's just a doctor dressed as a Pizza Hut employee. <laughs> like, and people just go like, what? <laughs> Plus, they get all that advertising dollar. That's true. All right. Well, that's. Uh, I think that's enough about that. Let's see. What else? Uh, <laughs> Sword Art Online. Yeah, yeah. Sword Art Online. We saw that. We saw that trailer. There is uh, so much I can't say about that because I sort of know a lot of. Uh, no spoilers. Yeah. So I can't. I can't talk about it. But what I saw looked 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 like Sword Art Online. Sword Art Online has a mixed. Um, like we've had people on here that are like, I don't want to talk about Sword Art Online. Don't even bring that crap up, you know. <laughs> so there are some real big oh, haters man. on Sword Art Online. That's so. because sometimes it can get a little, you know, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Like weebish. Cringy. Yeah, weebish, but then again, the fighting scenes are, you know, cool. Well, here's the thing with Sword Art Online for me. I like Sword Art Online, the, the season one, because I like the concept, mm-hmm. and I felt it finished out well, and it was done. Yeah. It feels to me, everything past that, even the stuff I like still feels like that sequel they probably didn't really have to make. Mm-hmm. And they still haven't stopped doing that. Because if, if you were to watch the first season of this and you, and you had started with season three or like Good or deal. this first, mm-hmm. you'd be like, are these the same anime? Like, these are really different stories. Mm-hmm. And they yeah. are. I got to say, with, with Sword Art Online, I watched I watch the first half of season one, the first half of season two, the last half of season one and the last half of season two, I really don't care. Mm-hmm. Uh, they didn't they didn't really pull me in as much. Oh, yeah, you forgot. But mm-hmm. I really enjoyed the first half of season one and the first half of season two. Yeah, let me correct it. I mean the first half of season one. I forgot, yeah, because I keep thinking season one ended when he got out of the game <laughs> because I don't even want to accept that they tacked anything onto that because that was a yeah. perfect ending. It was dark. It was a dark story. And that darkness never successfully came back to me correctly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like everything after that kind of felt, even when they tried to go a little dark, like when they went into like the gun arc, I kind of mm-hmm. felt like you you guys should have already figured out what's going on here. Like there's mm-hmm. a lot of examples that like what the big twist was. Also, there's just a the concept of stop playing because mm-hmm. you're not trapped. Right. Like the whole point of being trapped is what made it scary mm-hmm. and a dark scenario. When you're not trapped, it just makes you stupid. Yeah. If you keep doing. By it. the way, you're uh, you're falling off the screen over there. Don't don't be afraid of the the the, the cosplayer. Uh, yeah, she's, the she's, she's, right not, there. she's not don't dangerous. Bite. But yeah. the dragon's right here. You know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, yeah. I, but the movie though, Sword Art Online or No Skill movie, that was good. Yeah, no, that was good. I like that one. Was good. I'm I'm sort of a big fan of of AR anyway. Like I, I enjoy AR more than I enjoy VR. In, in real life, you know, so to see them see them play with AR was uh, really cool because I, I find AR much more appeasing. Come on, we're all geeks. We know we all grew up looking at the holodeck and going, "One day you will be mine." <laughs> I the things very I'll do. much did. <laughs> well, I mean, here's so so one of the reasons why I like AR to me, the reason why I like it too, is you see a lot of these VR like um, okay, let's 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 look at. Oh, what was that movie recently? Um, thing oh, yeah, I, read, that I read the book. Um, oh, uh, oh yeah, Ready book. Player Ready One. Ready Player One, yeah. So Ready Player One, <laughs> VR. They have these people, okay, they have these people running around their cities with VR helmets on. You see them running in mm-hmm. the streets, mm-hmm. okay? Now, when they switch between where they're running in the streets and where they're running in the virtual reality world, it's this big open field but in the real world, you have all these buildings and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, how does that work? Because they're going to be running into buildings. You see people. You're forgetting like, about the street with cars going yeah. down. And like, when they're driving down the road. And I was yeah. like, why aren't they you just have plowing the, people You have the over? mom who's hopping around her living room, jumping over the couch and stuff. But that doesn't really work in VR. Mm-hmm. Because VR doesn't take your surroundings into mm-hmm. uh well, so, in the book, it was like a treadmill set. It was a proper yeah. full, yeah. like they showed That's the very first time. Mm-hmm. But then they abandoned that because it was clunky and just go, oh, you don't actually need any of this. Yeah, yeah. So I thought it was weird when they got to that scene and people were running around the streets and stuff like that. And I was like, That's a good way to get killed, knocked out, or break your equipment, you know? Also makes when you run really into easy, a wall. You can just go, like, I'm just going to shove you down. 
<laughs> yeah. I know. I, come on. We know there's cheaters out there. There'll definitely be somebody that would trip someone. I would hunt yeah. that person down, figure out where he's at, and be like, I'm going to push him over in the game he's pushed over, and now Take I stuff. win. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay. Oh, all your money's mine, because that's how this works. <laughs> See, at that point, it makes more sense to make Ready Player One a AR game. Yeah, yeah. If you're, you're going to have running through, a, running through the streets, you yeah. need AR. Not, if, um, which I found weird is because... Um, the lead guy of the I forgot the name of the company that they were ISI was it A A S S holes <laughs> yeah basically um, the same thing anyways he had an immersion chair so he got to sit stationary and immerse mm-hmm. himself into the world and do what he needed to do everybody else had to move yeah so well, I they found had that treadmill thing he the main no, he was sitting down. No, the, the, yeah, he, the he had his own little guy. chair. No, yeah. I'm talking about the main character. He yes. started off with one. At the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But what he's talking about is in the in the evil corporation. Yeah, he had yeah. You have chair, all yeah. all the employees running on this little treadmill yeah. thing. And why weren't there more? Yeah. And he's the only one who has an emergency chair. But he has chair. this emergency chair. Well, yeah. I'll point out another whole, uh, the whole, um, like, indentured servitude thing where they, you know, they put you in the, the cage. You, and make it work. How do they like, like, you? No, no. The big thing about that is it doesn't have a treadmill, but they're walking around oh. and it's literally the size of a closet. So in reality, what you should have seen when they were supposed to be trying to work is because it was only like about an arm's length across. Mm-hmm. It didn't have a treadmill. It was just a helmet and gloves. So again, it goes into the how are they moving around when they're in this box? Like, wouldn't they just be bumping into the walls every mm-hmm. like couple of steps? So, but I mean, the thing is, you got to take Ready Player One with a grain of salt. It was a nostalgia mm-hmm. trip, but you cannot look at the science or the story yeah. or the acting. <laughs> you have to have an open mind. Or the special effects. Uh, in fact, you just, just enjoy watching Chucky. That was awesome. Favorite yeah. scene is Chucky. <laughs> that was a good um, one. I know. Like, that well, made me want to see a, a Chucky movie now. Just full VR. Scene. Like, I mean, full, uh, you know what I mean, the green screen. Like, I, I just say, like, you know what, make the next Chucky movie just... 100% animated and just make it an itchy and scratchy cartoon. Like, you know, make the violence cartoony but over the top at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I feel like they should do that with the Goosebumps. Like, it should be a horror movie. That's what they should have done with the Jack Black's uh, Goosebump. If they made it a horror, a horror movie, then it would have been a lot better. It versus mm-hmm. a comedy. Talk close to the mic. It would have been a lot better <laughs> if they made the movie a horror movie versus a comedy. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, whack a few kids. That would have got it. Exactly. Yeah. Like, a few kids got whacked. There we go. Like, oh, man. Like, better. start off with, like, six, but end up with only three. <laughs> yeah, and three. it's just like, oh, God, I man. This know about is... that. My best friend and Fred's gone. Is just like, oh. <laughs> you got to get at oh, least wow. one that kid. That says too much of Pennywise. No, no, okay. no. That's what Goosebumps was. Like, you lost people in the Goosebumps stories, the old ones. Like, things actually went Oh, yeah. Down. Kids got eaten. Like, if And this was actually on kids' TV. Like, kids yeah, actually no, did no, watch no, this no, back no. in the day. I actually, uh, my, my, my niece uh, watches a bunch of the old Goosebumps. I never watched them as a kid. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I sat down one day and watched some with her, and I was just like, Okay, some of these are really dark. It's the ones where if you're not paying attention, like, because I remember one of them is specifically, like, oh, they get trapped in this house on Halloween, and, like, the guy almost gets eaten, but they basically admit to the fact that while he gets away, every other kid, every other Halloween was getting eaten, so you're like, oh, my God, how many kids are missing in this town? Yeah. Because they've been doing this for years, and they find, like, old shoes, you know, like, signs that kids have gone. It's kind of like that really messed up scene, if y'all have ever seen, um... Oh god, the one with the little girl in the jacket. Little nightmares. Okay. Where you drop it in a room mm-hmm. and it's just all the shoes. And yeah. I remember a bunch of people just froze and went Cause this is like all these shoes and anybody that's read their history knows what the shoes mean and they're just like, That's a lot of shoes. <laughs> but man. Yeah, dark. So yeah. Arl Stein sneaks it in. Yeah. I think in a the movie they should have just had like, Oh hey, you kids are gonna try to help me stop this? Good, maybe we'll do better than the last. Mm-hmm. They could just like you might be do better than the last group. What happened to them? 